I will be able to take money to a prescribed limit given by the bank. Moment you start prepaying the amount, that means the bank now knows that you are trying to maintain a healthy credit position, the loan will get over with the principal and interest paid in total. Good morning and welcome to the session 5 of unit 1 and this is going to be on the management of banking and insurance services. Now this is a very very important topic where we are going to talk about the overdrafts and the loan facilities. Now when we are going to talk about overdrafts and loans this is a very very important and a common factor that most of the customers would like to take upon in bank and when it comes to the banking services overdrafts and loans are the primary source of income for any of the commercial banks. Now moving forward let's first try to understand Understand what is this overdraft and why it is needed in the modern times. Overdraft is a financial instrument which is provided as an extension of credit when the savings or the current account balance reaches zero. Now let's imagine that when we are doing business there is always a need for us in terms of cash and the cash rotation. So it becomes quite obvious for all of us to understand that when the money does not reach on the time when the money is not sufficient for us in terms of doing the business then automatically we need to extend the line of credit so that we are able to get what we need for the capital expansion. So what does a customer typically do here is that most of the banks they offer an overdraft facility to him which means he can go ahead and select expansion of capital that is he can go and take money more than the limit of his account depending upon the customer's existing relationship with the bank now that is very very important here now can I just walk into the bank just being a customer saying that sir I need an overdraft facility the answer is no why because if I am going to select something like that if I am going to take something like that the bank might not accept the bank might say that no sir we are not happy about giving you an overdraft because we have to go through your profile we have to see your banking presence your banking way of doing the business transactions altogether. so based on on the customer's existing relationship his capacity to repay back bank will go in for something called as a overdraft facility now the bank also charges interest and fees on the exceeding overdraft limit of the accounts quite obvious because for the bank the money is going to come back only in terms of interest and fees payment that they are going to collect in terms of the overdraft now generally there are two types of overdraft one is called as a secured one and the other one is called as an unsecured one. So generally what happens here is that people when they go in for this overdraft facility they need to be careful enough on this factor suppose if they are not able to get the money back on time or if they are not able to see that the money factor is not being returned as prescribed by the bank's time limit automatically this will land into extra charges interest fees and you might lose the relationship with the bank altogether. So that is why it is very very important here that the overdraft has to be secured, has to be understood, has to be on proper time altogether. Now secured overdrafts are the one overdraft that are given against one savings or current account. So I know what is there in your account, how much is there. Based on that I would be happy to give you a secured overdraft. When I say the word secured overdraft that means to say that the overdraft is pretty much secured in nature the overdraft is pretty much in place that means it will have the facility of taking up a loan against a security against a particular value altogether so when I'm taking this overdraft here I know that there is something to back up at any given point of time so the banker is not really afraid about this factor the banker knows that yes this money is going to get back to me from the customer so I'm ready to extend a credit facility here 
Now followed by the second one that is the unsecured overdraft. These overdrafts are taken against any collateral known as unsecured draft factor. Now for example other than the savings account or the current account if I'm going to take a collateral it might be regarding your house documents or it might be regarding a vehicle or some kind of mortgage that we are going to keep here and take an overdraft which means above exceeding your current account limit then that is going to be an unsecured overdraft altogether so that is why when we move forward let's also try to understand what kind of overdraft facility that a bank will be ready to provide now an overdraft facility allows the customers to view and use their withdrawal of money against their account up to an approved limit now that is a very very important factor approved limit it is not that i can take money as much as i want it is only to the factor that i will be able to take money to a prescribed limit given by the bank so that is why it becomes very very important here that i am able to go as per the limits that have been prescribed by the bank and not on my own ideology so that is why this is very very important for all of us to understand now once it is like an approved loan facility that we are talking about then the approved loan will come with a particular interest charge and that will be done only on the utilized amount now for example i need 2 lakh rupees for some capital expansion for some emergency purpose altogether but out of the 2 lakhs i had utilized only 1 lakh rupees and the remaining 1 lakh I did not use at all. That means I would be charged only for this money and not for the unutilized money. So that is where overdraft becomes an interesting and an emergency fund expansion plan for you. Followed by an overdraft facility helps an individual especially I would like to mention here the self-employed businessman that is if you are running a small time shop a small scale industry business altogether then this will definitely help to resolve the short term cash flow issues. Now if you look into the current scenario during the pandemic, most of the people who were in the terms of running a small scale industry or were into providing you know temporary jobs or the labor or skill kind jobs altogether, they had a very big hit in terms of the cash flow. So if I'm running a small tea shop or if I'm running a small grocery shop and all of a sudden because of a pandemic or because of an emergency situation like this, my entire business comes to a halt, then where will I go altogether? To whom will I go and ask for money? What will happen to the flow of money that has been coming all along? So that is where a bank comes into picture. Bank provides this overdraft facility so that I am not completely shaken by the factor that I don't have money at all. Using an overdraft facility, I can regain my business back. I can continue with the flow of my business. The second thing is that the credit limit factor that we are talking about, every borrower will vary from bank to bank. Now, for example, if you are going to have an overdraft facility with SBI, the State Bank of India, versus the overdraft facility with ICICI Bank or with HDFC Bank, there will be definitely a variation that is going to come into picture. Why this variation comes into picture? That is purely because if you start understanding and analyzing the factor, every bank will decide the credit limit based on the customer, his nature of business, his existing relationship with the bank. So based on so many factors, the credit limit will be approved by the banker towards that individual customer upon which you can go ahead and borrow your overdraft facility or you can utilize your overdraft facility. So that is why I always say that the word customer relationship is very, very important when we are talking about this overdraft facility. Now, moving forward. When we are also coming up with this overdraft, we also need to know a very, very important component and an interesting component known as the interest rate. 
Sir, every time this interest is one big dangerous thing that always comes into the mind. I don't know why people charge so much of interest, why interest becomes such a very big problem altogether. But then for the bank, without the interest, they will not be able to survive. So that's why the interest rate of the overdraft is calculated on the amount that has been utilized. It is calculated on a daily basis and billed at the month end. Now that is the most important factor here. Suppose I take that 2 lakh rupees or 1 lakh rupees as an overdraft and I keep extending it for let's say 30 days or 45 days. Now I will be billed, I will be charged for this entire 30 to 45 days. That means it depends on the time of utilization. So what is important for a customer here to see is that if he is able to return back the money as quick as possible, he will be able to save on the interest charges. So the money rotation here purely depends on the bounce back of the business. If you are able to come back fast, you are able to repay back the money at a shorter time period, you are going to save a lot of money on the interest charges. So that is where this entire scenario becomes even more interesting. So the bank also knows that the customer will take a due care because he is not interested in just paying up the interest charges on a daily basis so he will definitely try to come back and make the payment as soon as possible or else what is going to happen is that the penalty is going to be added to the principal amount so i took the overdraft facility for 30 days and after the 30 days still i am not repaid back i am going to get a penalty added up to that same 2 lakh rupees. So which means to say that now this is going to be a serious situation for the customer. He needs to understand before taking the money, is he in a position, is he capable enough? Does he have the capability of repaying back that money? The second factor, prepayment charges. There are no prepayment charges. Now nobody charges you money if you are going to come and give before the promised date. Rather, people would be really happy to receive you in terms of getting the money as quick as possible. So all the bank will also follow the same principle. There is not going to be any prepayment charges at all. Now what happens here is that moment you start prepaying the amount that means the bank now knows that you are trying to maintain a healthy credit position with the bank. So tomorrow again if you are going to go back to the banker and say that on an emergency basis sir again I need one or two lakhs the bank will not mind about it because they know that you have been maintaining a very good credit history with them. So based on the credit history based on your previous experience experiences based on your ideology of how you have been maintaining it automatically the bank will also decide your overdraft facility followed by the repayment factor now the repayment of the credit takes place through EMI now if you have that EMI is not getting into the normal way of how you do it because in a overdraft facility the EMI is not being given like a normal loan you don't have an EMI facility at all you are going to do it on a one shot payment the customers can repay overdraft cumulatively that means over a period of time 30 days 45 days 60 days when you accumulate when you go on a cumulative basis on a compound basis you will be able to repay back this is not like a loan where you can take 24 EMIs or 36 EMIs and keep paying it again and again this is on a cumulative basis where you have to repay back after that stipulated time period altogether so that is why I say that taking an overdraft is quite serious and challenging here because it is not like a loan where you can take your time where you can equate the money into simpler half simpler you know factors all together and then come back and say that yes sir I will repay the money at a given point of time now that is not going to be looked after here what will be looked from the customer is that does he have the repayment capacity so which means you need to be doubly sure about the factor for the amount that I have borrowed from the banker I should be in a position to repay 
pay back as the date approaches. So that is where overdraft facility becomes a very, very interesting topic. Moving forward, let's talk about the meaning of an overdraft account. Now, what is the meaning of an overdraft account altogether? Now, if you have a look here, the overdraft facility can be done through any savings or the current account altogether. The eligibility for an overdraft limit is based by the bank's customer repayment history and the account balance. So normally what happens, every banker will typically have an history about your savings account as well as your current account. So when they come to know what sort of balance maintenance you have done, what sort of history you have maintained with the bank, how much and how quick you are in terms of repaying it back, all those facilities will be definitely counted here. Why this matters a lot? Because today, what has happened in the banking scenario is quite different and quite difficult also. For most of the bankers, they have slowly started losing trust on the customer because of the non-repayment of loans. You might have heard through the several cases that have been happening across our country where the banks have been held up by the defaulted loans altogether. So for a banker, he becomes skeptical in terms of providing new loans to customer even though you might be a genuine person, even though you are doing a legitimate business. What counts here is that when they look into the history, they want to understand how is the flow of money in your business. Because many businesses have a different ideology and approach when it comes to the money factor. Now, if you are running a business like a tea shop or a grocery shop, or if you are running a business which involves on fresh groceries or any other kind of small scale business, the money flow is different. But if you're running a jewelry shop or you're running a textile shop or you're running a hardware shop, again, the ideology flow is different. So most of the time what happens here is that the bank tries to understand not only the nature of business, but the bank also will try to understand the scope at which you will be able to collect the money and quickly repay back. So that's why when you go overdraft facilities on loan, it can be provided by various banks based on the capacities, based on the fraction of how you are doing it and how the EMI can be looked at altogether. Now here if you start looking in, it can be utilized so that you can reduce the amount of EMIs on your loan. So you can use an overdraft even to reduce the EMIs on your loan. Now that is a fantastic approach that can be talked altogether. Now why is this coming in altogether? Let's try to understand that if I am going to look in terms of understanding the business methodology, the business approach. What will I typically try to do or what will I typically try to understand is that I have an outstanding loan, let's say about 5 lakh rupees and I am being paying an EMI worth about say 10,000 or 12,000 rupees per month, an example. But then, now what happens is that when I know that there is an overdraft facility, I quickly withdraw money from that and switch it over to my EMI so that the EMI level starts coming down. So instead of paying 12,000 rupees by using the overdraft facility, I can bring that 12,000 rupees to 6 or to 4,000 rupees. So that is where it makes a very big difference for the customer. To use the overdraft facilities, borrowers can utilize the funds that in the savings or in current account of the loan taken. So the banker will definitely use it they can utilize the surplus factor altogether. Now, moving forward, the meaning of the overdraft account also tells you that the surplus amount over EMI deposited in that account where you have taken is considered to be a prepayment of the loan and this can help in reducing the outstanding principal amount. Just to give you a live example here, most of the time this kind of case happens in home loan or in vehicle loan. Because when you take a home loan, you're going to take several lakhs of rupees as home loan and at that point of time your EMI 
money is also going to shoot up. So sometimes what happens is that you don't want to waste your entire salary paying that EMI for the next 5 years, 10, 15, 20 years. So what you try to do is that if you get an overdraft facility, let's take that money and put it out on the outstanding principle of the home loan so that I can reduce the EMI period altogether. So that is where you see that this entire concept becomes very, very helpful altogether. Followed by as the outstanding amount of the principal will also come down and the interest has been calculated on the lower limit, the interest of the outgo of the loan as well as so automatically now what happens one side the interest level starts coming down it starts getting adjusted automatically the surplus amount added in the overdraft account can be withdrawn anytime and the outstanding amount will be rebalanced accordingly so just look at the beautiful arrangement that the bank can do moment they give you that extra money you can take it out take the surplus and this will get automatically balanced again with the nature of the outstanding amount that has been taken here followed by the loans factor now let after the overdraft let us come to the real picture of the bank the real revenue schemes of the bank and that is none other than the loans loans are considered to be assets for the bank because more the amount of loans they circulate in the market that's where they are going to earn their bread and butter so which means to say that loans are the direct source of revenue for the bank moving forward the term loan here refers to a type of a credit vehicle so loan itself is a credit vehicle which has a sum of money that is lent to another party in exchange for the future repayment of value or principal amount. In many cases, the lender also adds interest or finance charges to the principal value which the borrower must repay in addition to the principal balance. So many a times what happens here is that the person says very very clearly that moment a loan has been taken a loan has been borrowed automatically you need to repay back that loan in a fixed period of time with an added interest charge factor altogether once the added interest factor is being taken into account and the term period is completed then you would have also completed the loans altogether now loans may be for a specific one time amount or they might be available as and when it's available so you might be taking specifically for a home loan for a vehicle loan for a personal loan or an educational loan but then there are loans also available on an ad hoc basis depending on the credit depending on the levels you have maintained so that you will be able to go forward and take it up as it is being decided here so this is a very very important concept that you need to understand now loans may come in different forms including secured, unsecured, commercial and personal loans. Now, these are quite interesting factor altogether. Why? Because when you are looking into the loan factor, even they have a lot of security, a lot of procedures that needs to be understood. So loans can also be on a secured manner and also on an unsecured manner altogether. Now, moving forward, understanding a loan is very, very important. Loan is a form of debt which is incurred by an individual or an entity, institution or government any point of time. In return, now what is going to happen is that the borrower agrees that to a certain period of time with a certain interest rate, I would return back the money and I would follow the conditions which have been mentioned in the loan. Followed by the lender may also require a collateral to secure the loan and ensure the repayment. Now this is very very important. Why? Because Many a times you will see that the borrower will come back and say on to this factor that every month I will come back and I will try to repay back the loan on the prescribed conditions on the terms that have been put. Now, if you are going to take a loan for 36 months, that is for three years or for five years, that is for 60 months altogether, an equated monthly installment would be prefixed by the bank saying that every month you have to pay so much of money towards 
a particular loan altogether. At the end of 36 months or at the end of 60 months, the loan will get over with the principal and interest paid in total. Now, there are many times when people are not able to pay the loans on time, then automatically a penalty will be levied or what happens is that it gets added up to the next EMI altogether. But in general, when you are able to repay back your loans faster, when you are able to reduce the time factor, automatically there might be a bounce in your EMI, but you will be able to save on the time factor. Moving forward, what are the types of loan as we have been discussing here? We have been talking about this vehicle loan, property loan, we've been talking about personal loan and we have been also talking about the business loan. Now, a loan has got a secured versus an unsecured loan. So when I talk about secured loans, these are the ones where we have been doing with the help of a collateral. So if you look here, there is a collateral for every asset that has been taken. The bank will first look into the collateral it will secure the collateral it will see whether that collateral is proper legal what are the conditions behind it can we look into it based on that the loan will be provided which means you are giving the bank a backup saying that based on the mortgage based on the security given to you you can give me a loan so bank is not going to give you a free loan bank is going to take that collateral understand your procedure understand your backup and then they would give up the loans required. Now, what is an unsecured loan? An unsecured loan is one where you take loans from credit card, signature loans. These are unsecured. Why? Because you're not going to go with the collateral. You're not going to pledge anything. You're not going to keep anything as a backup. This is going to be given on a random, on an ad hoc basis, depending on the type of cards, depending on the type of loans that you have. You can just go ahead, swipe the card and take that loan that has been extended, that's been available to you and you can make this loan in terms of using for your personal leads. So that is why in this kind of factor, the banks see a risk higher than that of a secured loan. Because if I have borrowed money in terms of the loan factor and all of a sudden I just ran away or I just vanished, I'm not able to pay the money, I become a defaulter to the bank. So this is where the lender is skeptical about giving unsecured loans in fact, because most of the time the unsecured loans will make us in such a position that we will not be able to repay back the loan and this will lead to a lot of challenges altogether. So that's why we say that unsecured loans are always dangerous in terms of the loan facility or the loan matter altogether. So most of the banks will also see that there is a lot of defaulting that happens. They will try to reduce the unsecured loan. The rates will tend to vary here. Most of the time the unsecured loans will have a higher interest charges. So if you try to borrow money on your credit card, that's going to be on a very, very high interest charge. They charge you somewhere 18, 20 or even 24% interest. So that is why people do not prefer going on to unsecured loans. Now, moving forward, the other one which we are going to talk about is the revolving versus the term loan. Now, what do you mean by a revolving loan, which can be a term loan basis that means to say that it can be spent it can be repaid and spent again which means you are going in a circular manner again and again and this can be paid on a equal monthly installment set across on the other hand when we are going to talk about a term loan a credit card which is unsecured can also be in this factor now you can use a credit card like a revolving loan itself because when you're using it for your house credit or for any kind of thing that is a revolving loan where you are going to pay back the money on a particular time basis on a particular timeline altogether. Now, we are also going to talk about the discounting of bills here. Now, discounting of bills is also one of the important facility. Bill discounting is a method of trading in which the bill of exchange to that of the financial institution, which is before it, you know, you exchange it, before you go towards it, before it is matured at a price that is smaller than the par value. So what is this bill discounting? It's a method of trading the bill of exchange to the financial institution, whoever is the banker, when before it gets matured at a par value, lesser than the par value altogether. The discount on the bill of exchange is based on the remaining time of maturity and the amount involved. Now, it depends on the risk 
risk assumed by the exporter. Normally, this happens only in the import-export credit facility. So, depending on the nature of money, depending on the nature of transaction and the amount that is involved, the customer will be asked by the bank, sir, can we go on a trade-off? Can we go on a bill discount exchange? Provided that money is very much within the limit, very much within the factors altogether. If it is a huge money and the time factor is also on the higher side, then probably the bill of exchange might not be accepted. Now, discounting of bill is always a win-win situation that I would like to describe because both for the customer, the loan or that particular value gets over faster. And here for the seller and buyer, this also comes to a faster trending altogether. Why? Because here the seller and buyer gets that credit done on par and immediately what happens is that the money exchange is being transacted. Now there is a letter of credit that has been given by the bank stating that on the behalf of the buyer, on the behalf of the seller, this amount will be transacted. So quicker the repayment, the quicker the maturity of the bill, automatically both the buyer and seller will get benefited in this transaction. Now, bills are discounted. Now, that's a very big factor that I would say at, a, at which the bank takes a fee before it releases the fund. It is applicable in most of the scenarios and we also call it as the letter of credit discounting. It aids the seller to get the funds earlier for a working capital and when the due date of the credit period comes, the borrower or the customer pays the money to the bank. The discounting is a huge win-win margin. Why? Because for the seller and for the buyer, they get the good on a credit period and as the letter of credit comes into picture, they can make an advance payment and finish the deal as soon as possible. The bill discounting is a trade activity. It aids in terms of helping you getting the earlier working finance and move faster. So with this, I come to the conclusion of this session in terms of overdrafts and loan. I believe that this session was highly informative, useful and resource for your particular topic. Now, in the next session, we will be talking about the various functions that is in terms of the agency services provided by the bank in different levels altogether. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.